Alright guys, it is another beautiful day at Immortals Inc. Maybe even more beautiful than most others because we get to open Hour of Devastation, some new Magic the Gathering cards, which everyone's excited about. We're gonna pop open this pre-release kit here, see what we got inside, build us a little deck, and get ready to do some battle. So everything's all red and evil looking here. Boxes. <sighs> Got this awesome red die. Uh, I like it a lot better than blue. Now we got both going on to keep track of both people's life totals. Some stuff about Nicol Bolas. I am not Nicol Bolas, unfortunately. And we've got some checklist stuff to do at our LGS. Do here at Immortals and get some cool stuff. And we got our promo card. We're going to go right into boosters, so I'm not wasting all your guys' time. We got two from Amonkhet, four from Hour of Devastation. I'm going to get all this packaging up out of the way here. And let's crack some packs and see what we got inside. Reason to Believe is our promo card. Uh, it's a cool split card. If you're in a blue-green ramp type of deck, you can try and cheat out some giant monster. Uh, we'll pop it open here. Kick it off to the side for now. And let's see what happens. Let's start with Dominant Cat. Because it's a known quantity and it builds the suspense for the new cards even more. Uh, the way I sort my sealed pools, I like to just sort everything by color to begin with. And then I'll go back and sort of see what I got. Um, make my determinations based off stuff like that. So we're starting off, we got Fan Bearer, which I really like. Bloodlust Insider, I really like. Uh, these are good aggressive one drops. Shed Weakness is a nice trick. Cartusha Strength is probably the best green common. A bit of removal. I like True Heart Duelist is a good uncommon. I like Watchful Naga. Lake Lane also leans me towards one of those big mana blue decks, along with Reason to Believe. I've got a Prepare to Fight, which if you're in white green and can use both halves, is just ridiculous. And because I am just the luckiest, we got ourselves a Foil Scattered Groves, Green White Cycling Land. Very cool. So we got some strong green and white in this pack with the Fan Bear, the True Heart Duelist, Cartusha Strength, um, Land and a Token. Got a Full Art and a Foil Duel Land because I am just the luckiest human being. A uh, little bit too early to talk about what we like, but I, there's some strong green and white here. Let's we'll see what else we get. Take out this land and the insect token. Two full art planes so far. That might be a sign, we'll see. Fling, Mighty Leap is a nice trick. Minotaur Sure Shot is aggressive. More combat tricks. Sun Scorched Desert, I'm just gonna throw over here. Actually, maybe not. If I get enough Deserts Matters cards, there are it's like a non-zero chance I wanna play it, but probably not. Splendid Agony is nice. Naga Vitalist for those rampy type decks. Not many white cards out of here. Um, Synchronized Strike is a really strong combat trick, especially if you get exert shenanigans going on. I like Gale Strike and Never to Return, another very strong aftermath rare. Three mana kill a dude is, is pretty good and you get the added bonus of uh, some zombies. Oh. Here's what we've all been waiting for, a little bit of Hour of Devastation. So, Kindle Fury, nice reprint. I played with that card many, many times. It'll win you a combat, pretty nice. Spellweaver Eternal is an aggressive blue two drop. Two mana, two one prowess with Afflict of two, makes it tough to block. Dauntless Aven, a nice flyer. Untapped Creatures, good with Exert. Another aggressive black card. Oasis Ritualist. We have all these these rampy type cards. Uh, and boy, does that tempt me real hard. Kenra Eternal, another aggressive black bear with afflict. Here's our first common desert. Desert of the True. Taps for a white or cycles. Comes into play tapped. Strike Riverwinder is a huge hexproofing common. That also cycles. Pretty cool. 
Raven Abomination is pretty medium, three mana, three one, not too high on that. Bloodwater Entity, the blue and red uncommon, three mana, two two, flying prowess, and when it enters the battlefield, you can get an instant or sorcery from your graveyard to the top of your library. Pretty nice if you can reuse a removal spell or something like that. Nissa's Defeat is probably the worst out of that cycle. You can blow up a forest, a Nissa Planeswalker, a green Planeswalker, or a green Enchantment, which is kind of awkward. You draw a card if you blow up a Nissa. Claim to Fame, going to be a lot better in Modern and Death Shadow than in Limited. Just don't really want to get your two drops back too often, but you know, there it is. You put it in the multicolored pack. We got an Unesh, Cryo Sphinx Sovereign. He is a mythic. He is a legendary Sphinx. He makes Sphinx spells cost less and <laughs> guarantees you draw at least two cards. Your opponent's going to look at your top four cards, reveal your top four cards, separate them into two piles, and you pick whatever pile you want out of there. And he's a big six mana 4 4 flyer, which is awesome. We've got a Lethal Sting. It's foily. We're two foils so far. And three full art lands. Lethal Sting is a very good removal spell. Three mana, unconditional removal. You just have to put a neg one neg counter on one of your guys, which isn't always even a drawback. Second pack here, Aven of Enduring Hope, also known as Angel of Mercy. Five mana, three, three, flying, gain a life. Blur of Blades is half removal spell, half burn spell, and kind of does neither incredibly well, but if the opponent has some one toughness creatures, you can definitely get some value there or use it as a combat trick because it is an instant. Aerial Guide is just a better wind drake. It is a 3 mana 2 2 flyer that gives another attacking creature flying whenever it attacks. So that's pretty strong if you end up in a blue aggressive deck with something like your Spell Weaver Eternal, prowess it up, make it tough to block. Lurching Rock Beast is a dumb cycler, 4 mana 4 2. I like Ronus' Stalwart a lot. He is a very aggressive 2-drop. Uh, exerts into a 3-3 three, three that can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. Grizzly Survivor, a nice cycling payoff. Steadfast Sentinel is our first Eternalize creature that I've noticed. Of course, I tend to not pay attention. 4 mana, 2-3 Vigilance. For 6 mana, you exile him from your graveyard and make a 4-4 four, four black zombie that is a copy of him. Another Desert of the True. We have many deserts. Life goes on, gains some life. I like Traveler's Amulet. It is a colorless way to fix your mana. Uh, Manticore Eternal hits really hard. Has to attack each turn if able. Um, I would probably be attacking with him each turn anyway, because that's about all he does. So the God Pharaoh is a big flying cycler. Got an If Near Deadlands. I think that's the best of the uncommon deserts. Taps for a colorless, tap and pay one life for a black mana, or four and tap to sack a desert. Put two minus one minus one counters on a creature an opponent controls at sorcery speed. And then another reason to live, you may recognize that, it is the promo card that I got. Never lucky, no full art land. Uh, gonna be asking for a refund here. That's my little joke. Two packs to go. We're really evenly distributed on colors which is interesting. Take out this 5-5 five, five horse token and another forest. We got Sandblast, 5 damage pretty much blows up anything. Uh, has to be attacking or blocking creatures so you can't get something that's sitting there being pesky and picking you off otherwise. Firebrand Archer is medium. Reed Stalker, Flash and Flying, I like that combination of keywords, although he's a little bit weak. Ambuscade is a tremendous green common from Hour of Devastation. Three mana for an instant, which is hugely important. Gives your creature plus one plus oath till end of turn, and then it deals damage equal to its power to an opponent's creature. So it's not a fight, it's just a punch. Another Grizzly Survivor, we got some big old cycling stuff. Bitter Blow, Bitter Bow Sharpshooters, I think is insane at common. Five mana, four, four Vigilance Reach. It is gonna take over the battlefield, and it gets to attack and block. Here's a Manolith for some fixing and some ramp. I like Unsummon. Black Desert there. Scrounger of Souls is a boring lifelink guy. Imaginary Threats is very good. Um, 
it reminds me of Sleep. If you did any corset drafting back in the day, Sleep was insane. It tapped all their creatures, and then they weren't able to untap next turn. This sort of does the same thing, because for four mana, it makes their creatures attack, and then they don't untap. It also cycles, and it's also an instant. So there's a lot of versatility. The card's never going to be dead in your hand, and I'm a big fan. Saving Grace is sort of this weird fog combat trick combination. Uh, I don't know what to think about it. I don't think I like it, but we'll see. Brittle Form is interesting. It's an enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you can make it into a 3-3 Flying Sphinx. So we might have some Sphinx Tribal going on with Unesh, even though they don't interact with each other in any way. Uh, then for two and a blue, you can scry one, so it's a nice mana sink. Uh, so you get late in the game in your blue type control decks. Um, we've got an Hour of Glory, which is a final reward that costs one less mana. And if your opponent is incredibly lucky, you might be able to get two of their mythic rare gods. That's probably not going to happen. It's just final reward, but better, which is good enough for me because I always want to play final reward. Last pack, last chance for an invocation. Last chance for some foil mythic or just nothing. Another Dauntless Aven, another Firebrand Archer, another Aerial Guide. Torment of Venom is a nice removal spell. It's four mana to put three minus one minus one counters on a creature at instant speed. I love my instants. Creature's controller either loses three life, sacrifices another non-land permanent, or discards a card. So all that stuff's icing on the cake. I don't really care what happens there. I just like four mana to, to probably kill a dude. Carrier Naga is just a Centaur Courser, three mana, three, three. Solid for your curve. Another Rot Beast. Well, Ketra's Avenger is super aggressive. Two mana, three, one. If you exert it, you prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to it, so it can just keep getting in the red zone uh, every other turn there, even after it gets outclassed. Thorn Moloch, three mana, two, two, Prowess. First strike when attacking. Again, good for that red aggressive deck. Without weakness is a nice trick. Gives your guy indestructible, has cycling. Doomfall is a little modal card. It's either an edict or you steal one of the cards from their hand for three mana. So again, if they have one big dude out, you can pop their big dude. If they have a couple little dudes out and maybe only a few cards in hand, you can snipe something really good out of their hand. Um, Obelisk Spider, the black and green uncommon, I think it's ridiculous. Three mana, one, four reach. Whenever it deals combat damage to a creature, you put a minus one, minus one counter on that creature. And then whenever you put minus one, minus one counters on a creature, each opponent loses a life and you gain one life. So it's like a one card combo that synergizes really well with all these other negative one, negative one counter cards in black and green. Uh, I'm a big fan. We've got a Devotee of Strength. Three mana, three, two for five mana. Target creature gets plus two, plus two to limit turn. Uh, another nice mana safe comes on a you know, pretty much on the curved body. Three mana for three power. It's going to hit hard if your opponent doesn't have anything going on. And two-headed giant, you can uh, pump your teammate stuff, which is very cool. We got Mirage Mirror, which I really want to play because I love the card. It's kind of ridiculous. It's three mana artifact, and for two, it becomes a copy of target artifact creature enchantment or land until end of turn. Uh, whether or not it's actually good, I don't know. But expect me to jam it into my deck because... It's my kind of card. And another foil, Hour of Glory. Second Hour of Glory, so we are going to be exiling plenty of gods or other creatures. Poor Ronus here is 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 getting scorpioned. Um, four out of six full art lands, so nothing to complain about there. And that is our sealed pool. I see a lot of black. There's a lot of removal in black. I love removal. Um, unfortunately, I really don't have any mana fixing at all. I have a mana lift, but no evolving wilds. Oh, and I have a, a traveler's amulet. So that's two things that'll sort of fix the mana a little bit. And this scattered groves, if I end up wanting to play green and white cards. We are going to pull out the multicolored cards. They tend to be real powerful. Um, so those will sort of tilt you 
maybe towards what you want to do if you have the support for them. Um, claim the fame. Just prepare to fight, which I love. And then two of these guys, which I'm not sure about. I don't think it's that good. One mana to scry three. It's not what I'm trying to do. It puts you down a card. Uh, and then, you know, if you can set up five mana to get a big dude into play, well, that's six mana to do it, and the most expensive cards I have in my pool are six mana anyway. So it's probably going to be something that's a little more fun and constructed or even on the kitchen table. Uh, I don't think it's where I want to be now. So we'll put these away. I'm going to scroll through here, take out the cards that I just really don't want to play in any situation. There's not many of them. Um, you can see, all these white cards are, are decent. I'll even pull out to the top things that I really like. I really like True Heart Duelist, Fan Bearer. Blast is removal. It's really nice to keep that stuff separate. Our blue here. I really want to try out Riddle Form. That is 100% my kind of card. Mesh. It's really good. So this other stuff. Gale Strike is solid. I think this guy's okay. I like the River Winder. I like Lay Claim a lot too, but again, these are super expensive blue cards. Two Aerial Guides is interesting, especially with some of this huge stuff like the River Winder. Um, again, I don't really have any giant green creatures that would look good with flying. Uh, I think for some of this expensive stuff, blue green might be my best bet, but we will see. Ancient Crab, I don't really want to play ever. Unless, I don't know, things are real desperate. I really like my black. There is removal aplenty. So we have two Hour of Glory. And a Never to Return. Three of my rares. Uh, just unconditional removal. We add in this Lethal Sting. And even Torment of Venom. That's five just strong removal spells. Good interaction. Take our opponent off of what they're trying to do. We've got some solid beaters. These Rot Beasts can hit really hard, especially if we're backing it with all this removal. Keeping our opponent's blockers out of the way. Doomfall, again, can kill some creatures. If we're picking off some of the smaller things with Torment of Venom and even the If Near Deadlands that I have in my land pile over here, we'll be able to Doomfall, make them sacrifice whatever big stuff is left. Kenra Eternal is a nice aggressive black card. Marauding Bone Slasher. Um, so far, I'm pretty high on black early on here. We'll see what else we got. Not many red cards. Firebrand Archer is, I don't know, 2 mana 2 1 doesn't excite me, casting a non-creature spell, I mean, you can poke him for a couple points of damage, I don't think it's great, I don't think whatever decks I have are going to be aggressive enough to use it, um, I mean, I've got like a Minotaur Sure Shot and a Thorn Moloch and a Bloodlust Insider. But I just don't think there's enough red. I really like Manticore Eternal. I foresee myself playing with that card quite a bit as the weekend goes on and we get into drafting and things like that. But I don't think it's going to happen this time. I am going to throw red out of the picture. Now we get to green. I probably gave away all my secrets, but I really like my green a lot too. Bitterbow Sharpshooters, I'm super excited about. Ambuscade is more really good removal. I like Ronus' Stalwart a lot. Synchronized Strike is tremendous. Cartouche of Strength is just great. We've got some other solid stuff down here. The Harrier Naga, the Devotee of Strength. Shed Weakness is a nice trick. Oasis Ritual List ramps a little bit up. I think I need that. Being 4 mana, I'm not sure if I'm going to need the ramp. 
on the vital list. Maybe. Again, if I was in that blue-green type of ramp deck, that would be better. I really like Watchful Naga. We get a Dissenter's Deliverance. We see things like Edifice of Authority or some other problematic artifacts. Spider Grasp, very playable trick. And I think these cards are not the best. So early on, I really like my black and green. Uh, that allows me to run this obelisk spider. And because I'm already in green, scattered groves comes into play. Along with the manolith and the traveler's amulet, maybe lets me play some of my white cards. Uh, something like prepare to fight then can, can come in. It's not ideal to be splashing for a combat trick, but I just think the back half is so good anyway that at any point in the game I can just prepare to fight, completely blow the opponent out, and be in a really good spot. So if we are looking to go that route, we'll get all this other stuff out of the way. Have this tremendous removal suite of... Ambuscade, Cartouche of Strength, Never to Return, Lethal Sting, Torment of Venom, Two Hour of Glory, and then halfway prepare to fight, because again, the back half of fight is just a fight. It's probably the most aptly named card that ever was. Obelisk Spider is just tremendous. I like this five. I like all of these cards. Watchful Naga is good with some of my untapping effects. Spidery Grasp is okay. We just have these low to the curve. Doomfall is more removal, my goodness. Get these ones I don't really like out of the way too. Grizzly Survivor probably won't make the cut unless I get desperate. Splendid Agony is even more removal. Uh, without Weakness is an okay trick. We'll consider it. This guy is a decent filler 5 drop. I like Unburden probably more than anyone else ever has in the world. You can just hold it till they're down to 2 cards. If they're not going to be down to 2 cards, you cash it in for something new. Pitiless Vizier is medium at best, since I'm not going to be doing too much cycling. So we can go ahead and fill out our curve some here. We'll keep these cards and these white cards that I may splash on the back burner. Two drops are threes. Or threes. I have a ton of three drops, which isn't ideal, but it beats having a ton of five drops. I mean, my goodness, here's even more threes going down off of the play mat here. That'll probably be frowned upon. So as it stands. That's not including the prepare to fight. You can cut Pitiless Vizier, he's not great. He's like a lurching rock beast without cycling. I think he does better in more of the dedicated cycling decks. Spidery Grasp can go. I have Synchronized Strike, which is just like a better version of it. Manolith, I'm not huge on. I don't really have this big stuff to ramp into. My curve is ridiculously overloaded at 3. But it does help fix my mana if I want to try and squeeze something like Prepare to Fight or Prepare to Fight in there as white cards. Maybe that's pushing it. Maybe I cut the Manolith and the Prepare. I 
that's tough. It could just be a 15 land deck with Traveler's Amulet. It's sort of like a 16th land. You can almost count it as a land. Uh, I think the opportunity cost there is low enough. If I do end up splashing white for this Prepare to Fight, I have these two Desert of the Trues that play really well with my If Near Dead lands. Gives me four deserts. Uh, I think we can go back to throwing the Sun Scorch Desert again, like I wanted to do earlier, and then thought better of it. Uh, so that's tempting. And we have this Mirage Mirror as well, just calling my name and, and, and begging me to use it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine creatures only, which isn't great, but again, I have so much removal that I don't hate it. Maybe Oasis Ritualist is just better than Manolith if I'm going to be fixing, because it also taps for one of anything, and it's also a 2-4 that can just crash into my opponent's face while I kill all their stuff. So that seems pretty reasonable there. I'd love to be able to squeeze this Unash into my deck, but... it's hmm, a lot of blue mana symbols. That's 24, which gives me my 16 lands. Allows me to run Scattered Groves and Two Desert of the True as my only white sources. Although not having a plains is kind of bad with Traveler's Amulet. Just a little bit awkward. Mirage Mirror may be better out of the sideboard if my opponent has something really, really good to make a copy of. Plus that gives me an excuse for playing it, which I really wanted to do anyway, because who doesn't love new rares? Um, let's break down by colors. Seems like I have a little bit more black than anything else. Um, but we'll go ahead and do some of the math, make sure we get the right kind of... Uh, distribution for our lands. We certainly don't want to lose any games because of that. Definitely a lot more black. Almost mono black. So 16 lands. We're definitely playing that because it's shiny and very good. These count as swamps. I guess I can play these the planes. So if I play these five lands, ooh, this is dicey, and one planes, that gives me 11 lands to play with. black spells than green, and I have a bunch of double black spells, including the Deadlands, and no green double spells. 5 forest, 6 swamps. Let's see what that looks like. Reach over to my handy dandy basic land pile. Probably greedy, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I want to see how good if near dead lanes can be with a bunch of deserts in my deck. Um, it probably would be wiser to just cut at least one of these for 
another swamp, but we're going to roll it like this. We'll take a final look at what we got here. Make sure I did the math correctly. Four white sources. Six green sources. Eight black sources. It's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen lambs. Alright. Sorry, that's really true. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Traveler's Amulet, sort of our 17th land. I'll put my two drops back over here. So 17 lands, if we count this as land. 21, 3, 4, 5, 6, 27. is our incredibly removal loaded green and black nine creature beatdown deck uh, which is of course an archetype so that's what we got I'm excited to do some battle excited to play with some new cards excited to hour of glory people into oblivion and I hope you guys enjoyed it learned a little something or not uh, feel free to hit the comments section or come find me this weekend yell at me tell me I'm a fool for not playing that incredibly good blue mythic I will probably agree but that is the way the cookie crumbles I thank you guys for your time and watching and let's all have a great hour of devastation pre-release here at Immortals Inc win some packs, open some shiny stuff, and that's about all I got. Have fun, guys.